Okay, welcome back. And we are going to be looking at creating um, our battle system in the game that we've been working on so far, our, our basic RPG game. And for now, what we're going to do is I'm going to be setting up a system for how do we actually enter the battle. It's just going to be simple. I'm, I'm not going to do anything fancy or anything like that. I just want to do it on the scene manager where I'm going to say that uh, let's bring up the scene manager and I'm going to put in update and I'm going to put um, if input dot get key up key code dot um, what do I call that number pad over there? It's not num. Nine. Uh, keypad. Nine. Okay. So when I press on that, something's going to happen to cause it to go into another, um, into a battle. Now, each scene is going to be able to manage. Well, in, in this case, right now, uh, the scene is going to manage what monsters can spawn in this world. And when an attack actually does happen, it'll take up the monsters from this scene and randomly put them in. So let's set up some stuff here. Uh, let's put a header. And the header will be um, scene enemies. Okay. And we want a public int min enemies. And we want max enemies. So we can have a minimum of a certain amount or a maximum of a certain amount. So like for instance, um, randomly between two and four monsters, that kind of thing. All right, so we also will need to have our enemies. What enemies can be in the scene? So for that, let us go back here and Wait for that to compile so far. Come on, I didn't do much. Shouldn't take that long. There we go. Now in our scripts, I have a folder for SO for my scriptable objects. Let's create C sharp script. This will be enemy SO. This is our enemy scriptable object. <clears throat> there it is. And this does not get from Mono. This is a scriptable object. Do not need these. I'm going to need a create asset menu. Oops. Delete. Come on. File name is equal to new enemy next is the menu name it's going to be rpg dash enemy okay so for now basically because we're learning about doing this as an initiative kind of battle scene i don't need much of anything else in here i really just want to do a public int initiative modifier not nod mod and that's all i want for now i mean i could put a whole bunch of other stuff in there like the name and all that but i don't care um we're just looking at this as the back end for now and for the back end i need to be able to see uh an initiative modifier so my player also needs an initiative modifier the lower the modifier the better so my player manager i'm going to set up also a heading and let's call this battle variables okay why is that heading all weird like that um, so public uh, let's do int initiative mod okay Heading, H-E-A-D-I-N-G, 
Heading. Well. Manager? Header. Sorry. Right. Header. Yes, I did spell heading wrong. Right. Just the wrong word. Header. Okay, so. Um, our player manager is going to have an issue of modifier as well. Now, here's what's going to happen. Uh, actually, let me go back to my scene manager and add some extra stuff. So, I want to put in public list. This is going to be a list of enemies, enemy SOs. And enemies equals new list all right so what's going to happen here is that my scene manager at some point i have it selected to a button press but you can do it as wait a certain amount of time or maybe somebody walks um, into an area Whatever your conditions for, for spawning a battle, that's up to you. Uh, in my case, I'm going to push a button. And so the scene manager who manages going into a battle says, I have some enemies. So let's create some enemies. We got resources and I created a folder called enemies. And let's create um, RPG enemy. And this is going to be a fox. Let's make this create. RPG enemy fox rabbit and a deer. These deers attack. Okay, so the deer's initiative, uh, they're not that quick, so they'll have eight. The lower the initiative, the better. Uh, initiative modifier of eight. Um, fox. Was, I said deer was eight. Fox make it a nine. The rabbit will be very quick. And let's make it five. Okay. My player. Let's make my player at the low level player. It. All right. Now, what happens is the scene manager has this list of enemies. Let's create my enemies. A deer, a fox, and a rabbit. And it's going to pick between two to four enemies of, from this list. Now, that's the scene manager. That remains in the scene. When we switch over to our battle scene, so save, I've already set up the battle scene with a player manager in it. So, uh, but the player manager is going to be coming over from the last scene. It's going to overwrite this player manager. So information from our previous scene will be coming into this scene. We need that because this scene has no clue what enemies were selected. In other words, the selected enemies are going to be placed onto the player manager. I already have a section called battle variables. I can place them there. So I'm going to now go to my player manager and let's create a list. So public list uh, enemy SO and this will be uh, enemies to battle equals new list of enemy SOs. Okay, let me just rename this from enemies to enemies in area. That's a little bit better, more descriptive. So these are the enemies in the area and on the player manager, these will be enemies to battle. How do we go about doing this? Well, first off, we need to find out how many enemies we're gonna use. So let's get an int. Uh, how many enemies is equal to uh, random dot range 
and that's going to be between the minimum and oops uh, come on minimum enemies and the maximum enemies but these are ints if i put my mouse over this we can see here it says that uh return a random int with min inclusive max exclusive so if i said two to four it's only going to do two or three it won't do four i would have to do plus one to make so if i type in two and four this would do two to five but the five is exclusive it's not going to include the five so you got to be careful of that because in a float um, floats are inclusive of the maximum number but in ints ints are exclusive of the maximum number bravo let us now find so we've we know how many enemies we want so let's do a for each loop uh, actually we don't need a for each we just need a for loop and this many times so how many times that many times I'm going to add okay no let's um, the list is here on the player manager so let's create a public void uh, add enemies and let's just send the whole list over should I um, Nope, I'm just going to set, um, I don't need to do that. Do it all over here on the scene manager. No, nope, I need to do it on the player, ma oh, hmm. do it on the scene manager. Let me just make sure scene manager has everything I need. Yes, it does. Good. So, um, we are now going to find a, um, int. random enemy int equals random dot range and I want to get from the enemies in the area so between zero and enemies in area dot count so the, I've got three enemies in my list so it's gonna be zero one and two so it's going to pick between zero and three exclusive, which is zero, one, and two. So it's going to pick a random item from this list. Once I have that int, and I might reorganize this a little bit after I finish typing everything out, I want to get the player manager dot instance dot enemies to battle dot add and I want to add come down nope wrong brackets I want to add uh, the enemies in area this so I can actually cut that out of there and remove that and then semicolon. Yep. All right. So each of these lines, so it's going to go for two to four enemies. And they'll add one random. So select a random one each time. It's going to add it onto the player manager's enemies to battle. And then once we're finished doing that, we should head to the battle scene now got everything I need I don't need anything else I'm going to battle let's go good now always remember so I've done this already but you got to remember that when we're doing this part File, build settings, make sure battle is in here. So I've got the seat battle scene, make sure battle's in there. Okay, 
Let's go back to our scene one. Nope, not reset. Scene one. And let's take a look at our scene manager. The enemies in the area will say are three. So resources, enemies. Oops, I did not mean to do that. So let's get rid of that. So deer, fox, rabbit. Okay, we've got three enemies in the scene. I want to select between two and four enemies. Our player manager has enemies to battle. Zero. So let's follow along with the player manager and see what happens when we hit play. Save. Play. And I'm going to hit nine. We've moved over to the battle scene and I can see it chose three. So enemies to battle, a rabbit, a rabbit, and a deer. I didn't choose a fox for this one. Okay. All right. So once we get to the battle scene, um, that's where we're going to start setting up our battle manager and our player managers and our enemy managers, all of that stuff. Uh, all that's going to be set up in the battle scene. This was only for us to be able to get from in here over to there. Uh, so I could trigger right now. I'm just doing it on update in the scene manager for an input of a keyboard input. You can do this any way you want. I can switch this out for, um, let's get rid of that. I want to call this public void trigger um, battle. And so I can get rid of that, get rid of that. And just take out the indenting. Good. Save. So I now have this here that I could use in a whole bunch of different places because uh, this scene manager is set to an instance, which means I can access it from anywhere. And as long as I access it and say, so if I have a collider on the ground, let's say I put it over by this base. Um, not vase, the potion. Or I'll put it somewhere else. The, over here. Let's do a create empty uh, battle area. Reset the transform. Add a polygon collider. Let's move it over. And give him an icon. We know where he is over by this tree if I walk over the other side of this tree bam I'm in a battle and let's create a battle script then uh, oh I create a folder called battle scripts and let's just call this um, battle trigger yes of course open up and there it is battle trigger Open you. I don't need any of you. On trigger enter to be. That's all I need. So my battle area here. Let's add that to there. I'm going to make sure that that polygon collider is a trigger. And basically, if. Collision dot uh, tag compare compare tag is player. Then I will get the scene manager dot instance dot trigger battle. All right. So now rather than a mouse press, I could walk up to that area and I will trigger it up there. I will trigger a battle. So let's hit play. Fingers crossed there are no bugs. 
Well, it didn't compile any bugs, so that's good. Okay, so I come over here. Boom, takes me to the battle. Now, when I finish the battle, I need to come right back. Um, which means that the player manager needs to know certain things. These are the enemies in the battle. Battle variables, uh, initiative modifier. Let's put in um, public throwing scene to return. Public Venture 2 Position to Turn 2 Alright Because when the battle is finished I need to know where did I come from and, and what position Was I in in that place that I came from So I can now go I think I can get it from scene manager It's in here somewhere Um Okay, I'm going to need this for my player manager. Um, actually, no. No. I will put that in here. So I'm going to pass in. Okay, all of that. that. Nope. Up to the top. Um, where is it? Here. This is what gets the name of the scene that I'm in. I used it when I was doing some saving. So I'm going to uh, um, before I load the scene, I'm going to say that pm dot instance dot scene des uh, not scene destination. Dot scene to return to is equal to that and pm dot instance dot position to return to is going to be equal I'm going to get it from the player dot instance dot transform dot position okay now I have some returning information and uh, there could be more stuff, but I'm going to leave at that for now. I'm going to cut this off. We've been going about 22 minutes. Save. Give it another test run. Hit play. So I want to make sure I have my player manager selected. Once that runs. So there is my player manager and here's my scene to return to position to return to there we go and, and an empty list of features to fight so let's head over by the fight and we're going to the fight and I can see scene one and position to return to so uh, in a win or lose situation well usually in a win situation I'll return to scene one and I'll return to that position uh, here are my enemies to battle. It shows four enemies, a fox, a rabbit, and two fo So I've got three foxes and a rabbit. All right. This is looking pretty good. And the next tutorial will be on creating the actual, the battle manager. And I know how long that usually takes to do something like that. We're going to focus on setting up the initiative first. Just to set up the very first um, combatants and who goes first. So basically, the first round of the game. All right, let us now. Oh, so yep, that's it, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.